Welcome to another day of coloring this beautiful door from Joanna Besford's Enchanted Forest. And today I hope that I can add a lot of color to the background. And I'm going to do that with, uh, well, different pencil brands. And uh, you may have heard or heard me tell in other videos that I received a set of Prismacolor pencils, Prismacolor premieres, and I am slowly going to use them in this video as well. Um, and of course I will use my Faber-Castell Polychromos and all the other pencils that I'm using as well. But for the background, I'm going to use this one, Prismacolor Premier. It is a French grey. And I'm choosing this one because I discovered that these Prismacolor pencils work very fast. And because I am a slow colorer, um, this Prismacolor pencil helps me to speed up the process a little bit. And while using this pencil, I am trying to uh, maintain this light touch. And um, well, I have been practicing for a while now with these Prismacolor premieres, and I have to say that it is it is possible to uh, to use them with a light touch I'm just adding a first layer of color right now If you are looking at, if you're watching more of my videos, you might have seen that I started recording shorter videos as well in a uh, coloring vlog. And I think I will keep doing that. But uh, as I was recording them, I realized that... Um, I do not want to stop making the longer videos like this one. Okay, now I will not cover this complete section with only this French grey. But I'm going to choose another color right now. And I'm going to use this one, Prismacolor Premier Ginger Root. This gives a slightly warmer tone. And it is a bit yellow, yellowish. If you do not have Prismacolor Premieres, then this um, Polychromos Warm Grey comes close, but it is there is a little bit less yellow in it, so you may want to blend a little bit of yellow with this uh, Polychromos Warm Grey.
Now I'm adding a little bit of this ginger root to the French grey. I will definitely continue making these videos because I realized that you know when you make shorter videos there is less time to just chat a little bit and I found out that I really like talking to you just about random things not only coloring and I would really miss it if I would not be able to do that. Last weekend, we, my husband and I went uh, to the beach with a group of friends and we had a workshop uh, building sand sculptures and that was really nice because I always thought that making sand sculptures is not possible with the sand that is found on the beaches in the Netherlands. We have a lot of sandy beaches. And, you know, because of the waves coming on the beach, moving the sand around, these little sandy sand grains, how do you call them? These particles, they are all rounded. They have a round shape. And because of that, if you build a castle, a sand castle, it will fall, fall apart because, um, because the sand particles will fall down. They will... I will continue to use this ginger root here behind uh, this lamp, but uh, again I will not cover everything. So I always thought that you can only make nice sand sculptures with what we call in the Netherlands with river sand, and that is a type of sand that has sharper edges and stick together m better so you can it is easier to make uh, detailed art but uh, during this workshop last weekend um, this artist showed us how to prepare the beach sand so that you can make uh, well pretty nice uh, pretty nice art with it and constructions I will now use a Bruinsville design, dark grey. It's a pretty warm toned grey. And when you use different pencil brands together, it becomes very clear that 
all the pencil brands have their own way of coloring. This Brazil pencil feels completely different than, uh, than the Prismacolor. And actually, I have to admit that the Prismacolor pencils do better on this smooth enchanted forest paper than my Brownsill pencils. It is really... Yeah, that is really true. I'm going to switch over to Polychromos because I think the Brunzels are really not they're not working that well in this phase of the drawing so I'm switching over to this one Polychromos warm green number five this is going much better So that is something to keep in mind, um, you know, the pencils that you use and the paper that you use and your coloring style together um, together they will determine the result so let's take a step back and I think this is going very well I will now continue to add some more of this ginger root. When I received this book, Enchanted Forest, I immediately found that my Brownsville pencils were not the perfect match to this book, to this paper. And um, I was looking for a pencil brand that would be more versatile when it comes to dealing with paper types. And I eventually decided then that uh, Faber Castell Polychromos were a good match for me and I'm still very happy with them and I'm using them a lot so here's the warm grey again from Polychromos
So let's take a step back again and uh, we are slowly getting there. And now I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to some of the stones here. And I'm going to use an erogeton cinnamon. This is just the first layer and of course I could choose completely different colors, cooler tones. But as I am looking at the complete picture here, I have a feeling that adding some warmer tones here and there in the wall, in the rocks on the wall, will help this picture to come together because the door has some warmer tones as well. So this is just the first, it's not exactly the first layer everywhere, but the first or second layer and I can change everything if I want to. So. If this particular color doesn't turn out to be the perfect color, then that is no problem at all. I can layer and add more colors. Just experiment. You know from experimenting you learn so much. Erogeton has a color oil yellow that is very similar to the Prismacolor Premier Ginger Root. So I'm going to use this one to see this one. This looks great, but I think these rocks need a little bit more of a gray tone. And I'm going to take a bit of a risk. Cold grey number four. And this is a bit of a risk because it is a cool tone. And I'm not really sure if this cooler grey is the best option. Maybe a warmer grey is a better choice, but uh, I can always change that. Now in the end I would like to have these rocks um, have the same structure, texture as the rocks here. 
Uh, not exactly the same, but similar detail. But at this point I'm just searching for the right color combination. I think they can have a little bit more gray. So now I'm going to use the warm gray number five. I just uh, I, the, the previous pencil was a cooler gray, and I I was uh, I wasn't really sure if I should use this cooler gray or this particular pencil, the warm gray. So now we will find out if this might be better. If you like watching videos on YouTube about painting, uh, yeah, painting, uh, choosing colors, shading, then there is a uh, YouTube channel that may be interesting for you. I love this YouTube channel. It is called. I believe it is called Color in Your Life. Color in Your Life. And it is a channel by a, a Australian guy. And he's traveling on his motorcycle. <laughs> on his motorbike. And he is visiting artists in Australia. I've seen him in the US and in New Zealand and he is interviewing artists and recording how they make their paintings and that is so interesting you see artists working with oil paint, acrylics, watercolor and pastels. Pastels is one of my favorites. I'm going back to the cinnamon. And uh, these artists tell you a lot of information about uh, choosing colors, shading and grading. Really interesting. Those rocks on the right are slowly uh, taking shape. And I think the stones that make the arch around, <coughs> excuse me, the stones that make the arch around the door may need a little bit of warmth here and there as well. Just a slight touch, so I'm using the Erogiton Cinnamon again. Just to add a little bit of color in the areas that have not much color yet. Just to add a little bit of a warm glow. I keep it light, very light, so I can alter the colors because this is I don't think this will be the definite, the, the final color combination. I think more layers of color are coming. Now, although it is a very subtle touch, 
I think you can see that the stones and the arch on the right over here are slightly more alive than the ones on the left. So I will add a little bit of color here. I recently searched in thousands of photos that my husband and I made the last 10 years during our holidays for pictures that I could use to make uh, a coloring book. I'm working making a coloring book of my own but it is not going to be just a coloring book because what I love doing most is to explore together with you how to improve our coloring skills so the idea is that I will make some sort of color, a long coloring book so that there will be videos available in which you can see how I color the, um, the drawings. But uh, coloring, making a coloring book takes, it takes a lot of time, I realized. And when searching our photographs for inspiration, I um, realized that um, although there is a lot of inspiration, it is not all usable. So I needed to find more subjects. And recently we went uh, to a province called Drenthe. It is a province in the north of the Netherlands. And there you can find old farmhouses with a very distinctive architecture and a very old yeah, it's uh, like Stonehenge, but then not that big, but uh, made of huge rocks. They are called Hunebeds, and that may be a very nice subject for coloring to color a Hunebed. It is said that uh, in these uh, rock structures, the ancient uh, buried their dead. I always find it very intriguing, those stories. Just like Stonehenge and there is, there are more more structures like that in the world. In France you have these large rocks standing. And last year my husband and I visited a site in England. I don't remember what it was called, but it is a bit like Stonehenge. But then in the middle of a, there is a village 
build and it was very interesting to see because those stones are said to uh, be yeah, sacred those they have spiritual powers i don't know so you see all sorts of people there meditating near the rocks making music some make very nice music others don't but it was really interesting <laughs> and you see very normal people just visiting the site but you also see very unique people visiting the site it's really really interesting uh, to see i'm now going to add a little bit more color to the door and i'm using prismacolor dark umber and a dark umber is available in almost every pencil set you have it is a uh, it's pretty common I think there's always something magical about sites like Stonehenge And um, I am interested in spirituality as well, but for some reason, visiting sites like these, I always think yeah, you know, Stonehenge is. It is a, a spiritual site. Many many scientists investigated that, did research. But you know, when I was walking through that town with those large stones in England, I was just wondering, what if this was just not spiritual at all, but just practical. <laughs> but maybe spirituality was practicality for them as well. But it makes you think. And it makes you, also makes you wondering, wondering what, uh, what will people 5,000 years from now make of the remnants of our societies. They would find the remnants of a skyscraper. What would they think?
But although I love visiting uh, sites like these hunebeds or other things like an old castle, I still think for me that uh, nothing beats the beauty of nature. So I am now just adding this r dark umber here and there. It's just another layer and many more of these layers will come on this door. And I'm just Adding this darker color here and there. I'm not thinking too much about where I put this color at this stage because because it is all so lightly done I can change everything. The only thing I need to be aware of in the end is that there is some sort of balance between the darker areas and the lighter areas because that will make the picture your mind will will find the picture more beautiful when it is in balance So this is uh, the drawing so far and uh, as I'm looking at it I think the main thing that needs to be done is that lion's head. The color is weird and it doesn't fit the rest of the uh, drawing. So although I thought a warmer yellowish color would do would be great. I now think that something needs to change. So, well, that is uh, for the next episode. And uh, I hope to see you then. Bye bye.